If you take a look at any popular Cretan video on YouTube, my own included, and browse the comment sections, then you'll very quickly notice that many men are terrified of using a Cretan supplement. And that's all down to their belief that it causes hair loss. So does it? Let's find out. In order to establish if there's any truth behind the belief that creatine causes hair loss, we first need to track down the origins of that belief. And those origins turn out to be a small 2009 study involving 20 college-age South African rugby players. Now at first glance, the study does indeed appear to give some potential cause for concern. So let's take a closer look. The double-blind placebo-controlled study used a creatine monohydrate supplement regimen that initially involved a 7-day loading phase of 25 grams per day. This was followed by 14 days using a 5-gram maintenance dosage. The study participants' testosterone and DHT levels were measured and the ratio calculated. And this was done at baseline, after 7 days and after 21 days. The study found that although serum testosterone levels remained unchanged, DHT levels of those taking the creatine supplement had increased on average by 40% above baseline. And the ratio of DHT to testosterone was reported to have increased by 22%. The study concluded that creatine supplementation may in part act through an increased rate of conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, DHT's role in hair loss is a well-documented fact, with hair loss medications such as finasteride functioning to reduce the conversion of testosterone into DHT by blocking the action of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. So I guess on the strength of the study's results, we should probably be a wee bit concerned, right? Or should we? If we take a closer look at the study's results, what we see is that although DHT was indeed found to have increased in the creatine group, it was in fact still within the medically acceptable range. Now I should also point out that not a single one of the rugby players taking creatine actually experienced any hair loss. If we also acknowledge that to date, no other studies have ever demonstrated that creatine supplementation increases DHT or hair loss, and that even includes 12 separate studies specifically looking at any potential effects on the testosterone pathway, then I think you can see where this is heading. In reality, what we're actually left with is a single somewhat questionable study, the results of which led some to theorize that due to the DHT link, creatine might potentially cause hair loss. Now, over the years, this myth has been further fueled, primarily in the form of bodybuilding forum posts, some from those claiming to have experienced hair loss as a result of creatine use, and others from those simply choosing to spread misinformation without any real evidence to back up their claims. The simple truth, however, is that plain old male pattern baldness is by far the most likely cause of any man's hair loss. And don't forget, there is always going to be a small percentage of men whose creatine use just happens to coincide with the visible onset of their own genetically predetermined male pattern baldness. And dare I say it, we mustn't forget that steroid use and hair loss go hand in hand. Bodybuilding forums, steroids, you can see what I'm getting at. The scientifically undisputable fact is that hair loss is not caused by creatine. It cannot be caused by creatine and any hair loss suffered by someone while taking creatine is down to something else entirely. From a purely physiological standpoint, there is no pathway by which creatine supplementation is capable of causing hair loss in humans, male or female. I've personally been taking creatine since it first hit the supplement market back in 1993. Now, if anyone was going to be a candidate for hair loss, then I was that person. My father lost his hair at an early age, as did my mother's father, and my older brother's hairline went the same way in middle age. In my case, however, following 30 years of almost daily creatine use, and now age 63, I've so far kept my hair. So if anything, my conclusion is that creatine most likely positively benefits the health and density of our hair as we age. And if you watch my recent video on creatine, then I'm sure you'll understand why that's most likely so. 
I personally use third-party lab-tested creatine from the aging research company Do Not Age. And they've very kindly provided viewers of this video with a 10% discount code, which I'm told will work with any of their products, including subscriptions. Many thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this presentation, then why not subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with all that's new in anti-aging and life extension. And lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and see you all again soon.